All right, good morning and welcome to our Results Direct What's Working Now website redesign success story webinar. Um, today we are so excited to have Natalie Branham from the Auto Care Association join us and share their success story from their very recent uh, website redesign project. Um, and not only does the new um, Auto Care Association website look fantastic, but the results are really amazing. Um, and I can't wait to talk more about this with you, Natalie, later on in the webinar. You've mentioned that, you know, not only are you seeing more traffic, um, but there's higher conversion rates and improved user experiences. Um, in fact, website visits are up 20%. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, well, first off, a little background on who we are. Uh, for 25 years, Results Direct has guided the nation's top associations with digital strategy, website design, CMS solutions, events, and mobile apps to engage members, increase revenue, and deliver results. We work with over 300 associations worldwide, and today I am so excited to be joined by one of our clients. So welcome, Natalie Branham. Uh, you are the web manager at the Auto Care Association. Um, would you introduce Auto Care um, to us and kind of tell us about your role in the redesign project? Yeah, hi everyone, good morning. Um, yes, yeah, so we're at the Auto Care Association. We're a trade association based in Bethesda and we serve all types of motor vehicles in the um, automotive aftermarket space. Um, you know, we represent member companies that uh, are manufacturers, uh, sell, sell auto parts or components and anything that has to do with repair maintenance, et cetera. So um, at the association, we are uh, really eager to, uh, you know, always improve our communication. And one of those tools, of course, being our website. So, um, um, you know, leading that effort as best as I can and uh, trying to be always uh, helpful to our members and, and anybody interested in our industry. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Well, and so we first started working together um, to create the digital strategy for Auto Care Association. Um, in your opinion, why was it so important to start with a digital strategy before really getting into the website design project? Yeah. So I think um, sometimes when you look at a web redesign project, people associate it straight to a web, uh, a technology specific uh, tool. And we wanted to separate that and really put forward our member needs, our user needs and studying uh, their behavior. So with that, it really meant that um, this digital strategy informed that whole process, the technology process, but um, we wanted to you know, get a, an insight into uh, how members think, what the expectations are, and that's really how you know we we with the help of uh, Alex, you know, we were able to uh, devise an engagement strategy, uh, really get to know our audiences, the ones that are within the association with our member compositions with the different you know users, uh, but also trying to be you know uh, inclusive and include any any new audiences that we want to reach. So that's really what informed and helped us uh, with, with focus groups. We had also open card sort and treat test activities, but not only helped us find actionable or defined goals, but really we were able to um, see our members categorize group different pieces of content together. So inside this digital strategy, uh, we not only define goals, but we're able to organize our content. So it really informed our content planning in the future. Um, we were able to see what sort of labels uh, members were putting to different portions of the website when they were grouping it together. So we were able to also use our own language in delivering this new website experience. Um, you know, we also, of course, wanted to uh, know what the current performance is to inform our future performance and do benchmarks. So data and KPIs through Google Analytics also was a, a huge part of it. Uh, but, you know, it all really helped come together in, in, in you know, choosing the technology later on, but knowing what those requirements and what those goals were first. Um, I think that is so important and such a good way to, to go about that so that you're devising the plan and then finding the technology to support that plan 
versus, you know, finding the technology and then kind of um, making the plan fit the technology. Yeah, and I would add that um, your digital strategy should not only inform your website, but it informs the way you want to align it with your CRM, for example. Right. Because, you know, that's, you get an insight into how users categorize content. So that informs not only your information architecture for your new navigation, but it informs the taxonomy, right? So you're able to know your demographics, uh, how people will search for content, how you want to toggle your content, not only on your website, but in your uh, CRM, what fields you're not already collecting of data that could help, you know, really get more insight into those users. So we were able to capture all that information and then trickle it down to the different types of technology that needed to help us support those efforts. Absolutely. And, you know, again, we're, we're going to talk more about the outcomes and all of these success measures that, you know, we're seeing now. Um, but you can really tell that with the increase in engagement, all of the work that went into that initial planning and strategy and listening to your members and getting their feedback. Indeed, yeah. Awesome. So can you kind of walk us through the redesign process? Like how did this start and kind of what were some of those important phases? Yeah, um, we wanted the website and the redesign process to be growth driven, growth design driven. And so um, the, folk, the user experience was the main focus in, in improving that user experience, the member experience overall. And here actually you can see the before and after um, you know, our, our old homepage uh, was more on the static side and, um, you know, with the new design, we wanted bigger fonts, we wanted more contrast, we ended up with a dark mode, which we really like, and our members have received very well. Um, and we wanted to just make sure that, um, although we wanted to strike a balance of, you know, uh, having all the different pieces that are important right off the bat when you're landing on a homepage, but categorizing things and, and, and helping the user click on a specific thing that will, you know, lead to more options. But, uh, you know, the, it was important to uh, less is more in a way and to bring a level of personalization as well. So, you know, you have a section like the I want to, uh, which is explore bar. So it, it really supports that main navigation that you have at the top. And, um, you know, with, with I want to, uh, it's more on the actionable side. So uh, it helps with personalizing and tailoring content, content and then help the user when they land on the website to, you know, to see different promotional aspects, but from a, you know, I, I need this right now or a perspective of let me, you know, let me perform this specific task on the website and this really helps trigger that aspect of it. Um, these are, this is a great way to personalize and uh, uh, drive different pieces of opportunities that you sometimes get overwhelmed and you want to put it right on the on the homepage carousel, etc. Because you know these options actually change depending on the season. So if we have a words open, then you see a words as the first option. Then different events, once you click on it, different options show, etc. So this is kind of a really great way to provide that configurable, that customization that you need your website to have, that dynamic aspect without losing um, I, you know, sight of your you know, high level alignment as an association, what you're trying to prioritize in, in helping people know who you are, what you stand for. I love this. And um, I love this feature, especially because, um, especially you pointed out that you're able to change this depending on you know, the current priorities of your members and the association. So, you know, yeah. right now it's time to apply for an award. So you want that at the top and you want that easily accessible, easily, you know, very visible when they come to the site, that they can get to where they're trying to go and accomplish that goal. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, this is where our communication team, uh, our, our different teams really came together at not just, um, you know, promoting something, but looking at looking at it through that member lens so you know we have certain things like we want to promote of course our data solutions 
uh, we have, we're a very data-driven association and we put forward, uh, you know, information about aftermarket uh, insights, uh, interactive tools that people subscribe to different organizations. So uh, it was fun to find ways to word it out in a way that can be solution-driven. So this, this explore bar really uh, takes a good tackle on that. I love that. And also the fact that, you know, you're giving them all of these options and, um, you know, actionable things that they can go and do. Meanwhile, you're not cluttering up the, the design and the layout and putting all of these options and kind of making it overwhelming to them. Um, so I really like what, what you guys have done here. I think this is a great choice. Yeah, and it's right up off the fold. So most of the time, the you know all the different devices, we try to really put that at the very top so people can can really explore explore this section. Um, the other aspects of the redesign that we wanted to really work on is, um, like I was saying, we're a data driven association, and stats numbers are important to us. Um, and we wanted, you know, to find a balance with our demographics too, where, you know, when you're on the page and you're scrolling down, you have certain pieces that gives us to the page, like uh, this, this stats actually are animated. So when you scroll down, they kind of, you know, start counting up. And um, it's just really fun because, you know, it's not distracting because we don't have it everywhere, but, um, you know, it does catch your eye and then you, you, you want to explore what our impact is. Um, and certain pieces like that are really helpful in telling a story to your members about, you know, what you guys stand for, uh, how your impact is. Um, you know, performing. And, and these are things that are important um, for, for new users uh, coming to the site, new visitors, as well as returning visitors, because these, these stats are actually updated uh, every year um, through our uh, flagship publication, our fact book, uh, which contains all these facts and, and all, this, all this wonderful information about the industry. But then for anybody new, anybody that's interested in, in our industry, they can see you know, the level of impact and in, in, in our profile and influence. I love that. It's, you know, kind of like just a, a quick overview of all of the different places and areas that you guys are touching and, and impacting. And, you know, the, de, the design element of, you know, the animation of it counting up when you go to the site. Uh, I think that was a, that was a really nice touch. And, um, you know, you had talked a little bit about your member demographic and some of the choices that you were making when it came to design um, and the importance of keeping it simple. Can you kind of talk more about that a little bit and about like your your member base? Yeah, so in our association, um, you know, the website, you know, I think it's, um, you always want it to be edgy, innovative, professional, but you want to watch for you know keeping it uh real to your members and our our demographics you know, uh, mostly are 50 uh years or plus so we wanted to make sure that we were prioritizing those users and you know not go for like uh, a bunch of parallax or animations or, right. or things that are very catchy because we want to you know be very intuitive and 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 make sure that the user doesn't get alienated uh, in the majority. So, you know, we, we, we try to strike that balance with the bigger font, with the contrast, with really, uh, you know, pictures. Uh, so we have an image to text ratio, um, but really not overwhelming. I think anybody, including me, appreciates that because like, I, you know, everybody's looking on the screen now. So it's nice to see you know, dark modes from time to time that is not straining your eyes. Um, so yeah, there were a lot of things that went into the design process. Um, the user experience definitely was at the forefront. And, you know, we have an in-house design team that were major key players on this. And of course, uh, all the help that we got from the experts at Results Direct. Awesome. And you feel like with the design process, you know, kind of combining your team, your in-house team with the Results Direct team, so things went pretty smoothly, kind of what was that kind of process like? 
Yeah, it was it was great um, because uh, we we use certain platforms here to collect all our feedback. We use things like Envision, uh, you know, Adobe products, um, XD, for example, and then we were able to compile all our information and then provide it to Resource Direct. And uh, Resource Direct was very accommodating. There were certain pieces that you know we felt strongly about in keeping our identity, and I think. You guys did a really good job at balancing all of those things and, and making sure we were still, you know, prioritizing the user, um, making sure that we were uh, striking a, a good balance and, and, you know, avoiding any pitfalls or things that we might not have accounted for. Um, because, you know, when you're designing, you want to make sure that it works across devices that, you know, there's a, a few of these variables that are accounted for, or that when you, you know, downsize the screen it's still going to show right. So it was good to have that partnership to really just, you know, help us fill in those blanks. Yeah. And it, it sounds like we were able to kind of play off each other's strengths during that, which is ideal situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And um yeah, it's, it's been very rewarding because, you know, we didn't want to just look for a uh, website redesign vendor. We wanted to make sure that it was a, a long-term relationship where, you know, we can find a trusted partner that uh, is able to, you know, uh, let us know what the current trends are, what uh, things we should keep an eye out for, and, and really know that you guys had our back. So, yeah, it was great. Awesome. And I love hearing that because from, from our perspective, we know that once your website launches, like that, that's not the end, you know, time doesn't stop there. Um, and there are new trends coming out all the time. There's things you should be paying attention to. There are things that you can kind of, you know, block out. Um, and we love having those ongoing conversations and hearing your successes and um, what's working, what's not, that, that's really important. And we've really enjoyed this partnership. And I think one, one main feature here was integration, right? Um, you need a partner that's able to really be well-versed in the different AMSs that are out there. And with Results Reg, we felt like, um, you know, you guys had worked with uh, the majority of the, the different CRMs and AMSs. So we, in our specific implementation, you know, once the, this whole website and, and, and uh, idea started, we were looking for a digital transformation. We weren't just looking for a website redesign. Um, we were looking for ways to improve the entire member experience, no matter if that meant the website or if that meant our CRM that's driving, you know, our, our, our e-commerce and our, our membership portal. But um, we ended up doing both at the same time, a CRM and a, uh, and a CMS. And that, <laughs> so it, it was bonkers at first, I think, but, you know, that digital strategy really helped us inform. So I think for anybody watching this, you know, helping separate technology and being CRM or CMS agnostic and just look at your member needs look at your user needs, what are you trying to achieve? Uh, what new uh, you know, journeys are you trying to tackle with, with this new website and CRM? And then those things will just fall into those right areas. But building a requirement, talking to your staff, talking to your members, uh, major, major key components. Yep, and you can really tell that um, through all aspects of this project and the site and everything that you, know, you really listen to your members. Um, and it's evident, so that's great. So what would you say your top takeaways um, were from this process and, you know, including any new opportunities or were there any surprises that came up? Um, in terms of uh, like, I think uh, content migration was one, for example. Uh, I think that uh, you know we we did this automated bulk uh, where we transfer the majority of the content from our previous CMS into Sitefinity, but um, sometimes the you know the content gets carried into the new system, but not the formatting, not the new uh, you know design aspect is taken into account because those things are tailored experiences. So. 
I would advise anybody uh, when they're going into this web redesign project, you know, take that into consideration, build a few weeks into your project where you're able to uh, align that content or work on new content that helps those pages uh, really shine and, and, and provide that value. So um, that was definitely eye opening because, you know, I, the, the project went really well and, you know, we had padded time in different phases. Uh, but, we, you know, I think if we wouldn't have had that padded time, we, there would have been expected delays, for example. Um, so just, you know, carve some time for your content tailoring when you're under your new templates, under your new uh, experience. Um, I, I'm so glad that you brought that up um, because I, I feel like a lot of times it's, you know, once the content is in, you know, you're ready to launch. Um, but there's definitely, you want to go back, you want to like look at all of these different pages, especially those high traffic pages and make sure that everything is um, aligned and formatted and, and also taking advantage of the, the new tools and widgets and functionality that you have. It was, it was great because in a way it was such a learning process that there was content that there, it was no longer relevant. Um, and there was content that needed to be spruced up. Um, mm -hmm. There were images because we turn a lot more image oriented to really, you know, stop draining um, the, the eyes on just content, content, content. And so trying to find the right photos to go along with pages, uh, you know, doing pieces like a stats, pulling those animated you know, uh, stats onto pages um, and, and, and creating video playlists that can help, again, support those messages. Um, it, was, it was a fun thing because we started seeing, uh, you know, more than just the way we were doing things before, but uh, trying to engage the users in, in, a, in a more uh, fun and, and discoverable way. I, I think that's great. And so it sounds like from your process, you waited, uh, did you wait until after the content was migrated into Sitefinity to then kind of go through and, and clean things out or remove pages or w was any of that done prior to the content migration? It was both. Yep. So we, we started by having about 9,000 pages three years ago. And, you know, every year we, one of our projects has always been spring cleaning <laughs> across the year. And um, because, you know, you don't want to wait until you're ready for an implementation to watch your content, watch your governance, you know. And um, one of the important things to us was uh, defining those pages and what those pages purposes were. Um, so. The project started before we had, you know, a lot of different PDFs, images, content uh, that we reduced, and what we ended up consolidating, we brought over to Setfinity. And then once we saw the designs and the wireframes that had come out of the whole um, design and development portion, um, we realized we even needed less than that, right? Um, that that, that um, these pages were able to tackle what used to be three pages, now is one. So um, it, it was even a more rewarding experience, but that also meant that there were other, you know, uh, components, like I was saying, with video, there were images, with stats that we really wanted to help uh, support that message, so. There were other type of struggles in the in good struggles in the way that you know we were trying to really enhance that message. Yep, and I mean it looks like you were very successful in doing that. Um, so now, every page that we try to work on, the, the at least the curated pages, you can see the difference. Um, you know, with uh, with uh, the product, uh, the platform wireframes, the topical wire, uh, wireframes that include all the information about vehicle data access, um, the, the work that we're doing on um, right to repair, um, all these different topics that are important to our association and our industry are really uh, a, a great balance between image and text. Um, the other type of lesson here uh, after going through the project is training. Um, in general, training can be very draining because, you know, 
it's it it can be an hour and a half or so and your you know attention span has minimized now with with twitter and all the social media platforms so establishing a reasonable training experience was really important and i think one thing i'll, I'll if i could do again i i you know i would i would try this is uh, as you know you're going through your your training um putting timestamps when a specific topic starts right like how to edit a page like when that begins when that ends or how to upload an image so then you can actually split that video into smaller chunks and then when you're building a style guide or a training page for your staff you know you're able to uh, have those those quick bites that are easier for them to to look at because i know i will not go back and see an hour and a half worth of training you know <laughs> just to find that specific area so it just you know, help help recycle through that content that's super valuable and, and it's just a lot to take in for, you know, your staff and, and for yours as well. Mm -hmm. I, I know it is. And um, I love that. I think that's great feedback um, for us as well, because, you know, there's a lot that goes into these training sessions and we're basically just, you know, getting you up to speed so we can hand over the keys and that you can just drive this home. Um, but in the future, you want to be able to go back and, you know, uh, reference very specific how to's and, you know, at that time, you may not need all of that information. Yeah, it might not be relevant right at that moment, but when it is, you want to be able to find it quickly. So I think that's really good feedback. Yeah. And, uh, and, and making it fun because, you know, it could be two days worth of training for all your staff and, I'm sure everybody's looking forward to it, but <laughs> um, it, you know, we try to gamify it a little bit. So we gave gift cards or, you know, we even had like a mini quiz just to oh, see what people awesome. were <laughs> paying attention to that was really valuable to us. So they can help us, uh, you know, carry this site to, to, to success and in keeping the content you know, being stewards of the content and, and, and be those gatekeepers as well, just like the web team or the comms team would be. Um, I think that's great that you're offering incentives and, you know, for others in your position when it comes to that, to the redesign process and you're, you know, the captain of that team, um, having that in mind and ways to make sure that your, your team is right there involved and, um, and ready to go and has everything that they need. So, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of, um, audience and, and, and those needs, um, this is kind of tied to the CRM. Um, we, on our old side, we had a storefront where, you know, you would see on the homepage on any page that were on the site, a little shopping cart. And that was, you know, meant for people to look at the store and see all the different products and, and events that we had available. Um, but we realized, you know, that uh, what, what, it, what mattered to us was delivering tailored experiences. So um, I think some associations are probably in the same boat where you're not offering a vast array of different products and services, you're offering specific things. For us sp specifically as a trade association, our products and services are enterprise level. So, you know, you don't just decide to come to our site and purchase something, it's, it's, it's establishing uh, some sort of you know interaction and relationship. So um, you you can't quite um, compare yourself to an Amazon experience, you know. But I think studying: Do you really need a storefront, for example, or do you want to uh, really curate and and expand um, the those product pages, those those product wireframes? So we developed. For example, a, a wireframe for our products that are for sale, where we, you know, do capture leads and we we, we try to get conversions. But we also developed a an um, platform um, um, wireframe, and what that meant is because we sell products, but those products are under specific platforms, and we don't sell the platforms. But often, and this is something that we saw reflected in that whole digital strategy when we were interviewing uh, members is people are confusing our platforms with our products. And we wanted our platform pages to reflect all the information that they can get 
and then you know really see the products that we sell within those platforms. So differentiating that and creating those different wireframes that really helped us um, demystify that whole uh, portion of, of how we, we sell products and it helped with our conversion rates as well. That's awesome. And I love that you used the word uh, demystify. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a true mystery. To know how people were using, uh, yeah, I want I want a subscription to VIP, and that's you know that's the platform, and what they were talking about is you know subscription to a database um, that we offer. So now it's so rewarding to see people using the right lingo and and you know bringing an experience that can help carry that. Um, I think that's great. And also, you know, again, you're mentioning things that you learned during that digital strategy process and how important that was. I mean, it's directly led to increased conversions because now people can find what they're looking for. They understand and your language matches their language in terms of what they're looking for. Um, and, and the storefront, for example, you know, I think many sites have shop.yourassociationname.org, right? Um, that And that's some, something uh, often highlighted by the CRM or AMS provider. But like I was saying, like, our, what is your sales model? You know, how many products do you sell? What's the frequency in which you sell them? Those questions really help explore what maybe what you need is more curated, uh, you know, product page experiences and then let the CRM handle just the purchase process, right? And, and not focus so much on selling, but offering an experience, offering a relationship. And, and people, I think, respond better to that than when you're just trying to right off the bat, like this is our e-commerce site, you know? Right, and you had mentioned that something that you had learned, you know, in their purchase behavior was they would come to purchase one product. It wasn't that people were buying things in bulk. And so again, it kind of came back to, do we need a storefront? Is a shopping cart really necessary for this? Um, yes, so yes, definitely. Um, that was really eye-opening. And then one of the things that we also looked at in our analytics from our pre previous site, although the, sh you know, the shopping cart and the, sh and the store was available across the site, it wasn't a, a top traffic page. So, um, and, and going back to the message of, you know, people normally is you just purchase one product at a time and our products are actually uh, not, not individual purchases, but company level purchases. So, you know, it's even more specific uh, where, uh, you know, one person is just in that company buys it and then everybody has access to it. So the whole sales model experience and, and the prices that are, of course, aligned to that are different and not so like impulsive, you know? Right. You're not offering like buy one, get ones, you know? T-shirt shop, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Cause that I would buy anytime. <laughs> Um, well, you know, thinking about your goals that you set out when you're starting this project, um, did you achieve those? And what kind of feedback have you received from, you know, stakeholders and not only stakeholders, but, you know, members and, and even internal staff? Yeah. Um, so we launched January, late January, um, and we're five months, six, five months in. And, uh, you know, we've been looking at our Google Analytics, our stats and information here, and we've seen increasing engagement. Um, we've seen, um, you know, that's definitely uh, one of the top goals that we had. We wanted to drive more self-service as well. So um, with, with the whole new member experience and self-service that, that were our goals, our priorities, you know, we feel like the information, the stats that we're seeing reflect that in which not only we've increased page views by 22%, but you know, we've increased pages within a session. So that means that you know, a user goes through three, four, five different pages in a single session. So you're keeping them engaged. And when they're there, you know, they're actually spending more time than usual on a page. So it's gone more than double uh, the time that we spend on pages. And this is just back uh, to what we were talking about, curated landing pages, right? So um, for example, those platform pages contain so much information about 
um, you know, the, the not, not just the technology, the benefits, the features, the technology documentation that's able to be offered, all these questions that we used to get in the info box or calls that we used to get, we're providing all of that information right off the bat. And um, it's really increased engagement and we've seen less bounce rates. So people are getting to the content that they, they need. Uh, just you know exiting to the next thing so we you know i think with a new website design not only you want to achieve reaching more people or more more visitors but you want to engage them how can you retain them better Absolutely. and that's been really paramount and we've seen that reflection on the on the new site um, and when i was looking at your stats i mean we hear this often i mean it is a huge goal across the industry and, you know, increasing member engagement. And, you know, when we're talking about the website, you know, we hear let's increase engagement, but how is that being measured? Um, and a lot of times, you know, if we're not talking to you directly, we can look at Google Analytics and we can see like, wow, I mean, these results were significant. I mean, compared to the previous site, uh, and you mentioned session duration, but I just want to, you know, kind of go into that a little bit more because it was a little over a minute. Yeah. Now, now it's almost at like five minutes. Yeah. I mean, in five minutes, it's, it's even, I think to any standard, a lot of time for a visitor to come and average five minutes on your site. That's just speaks volumes about your content, your quality, yeah. your duration. Uh, and we have true experts in our industry. We have subject matter experts that constantly, uh, you know, review our pages. We have our amazing comms team that does a really great job at describing everything and putting it in, in, in plain language for, for everybody. And, um, and again, I think supporting, not just putting good content, but putting good supplementary things like videos and stats and all of that helps keep that user on your page. Um, so it's really, really awesome to see these awesome stats and, and also the increasing bounce rate. So this yes. speaks again about your information architecture. So when people are like, let me explore this section, um, they're able to find exactly what they're looking for and they're not just exiting to the next thing. And uh, one of the things I, I thought was really eye-opening is and back from the digital strategy where this came from is, our main navigation used to be seven uh, options at the top level. And, you know, I think a lot of associations we struggle with, um, you know, putting our, our efforts that everybody's working so hard on in the association internally and mapping that to the user, right? Um, we wanted to not go from a departmental or a internal view, but really reflect how the user sees our content. So, uh, with networking and development, this is a section that was, you know, networking for communities and, and committees, volunteers, uh, and professional development, because of course, you know, they, you know, by being in these communities, you know, they're working on advancing their careers, but um, the professional development portion that uh, houses the words, career tools and resources mentoring, uh, we thought, you know, one aspect that this engine is really working towards is uh, building new opportunities for global growth for our member companies. And we thought, you know, let's just not call this professional development. Let's just call it development. So it could serve for the individual and for the company development. Um, so this is a great area where we surfaced so much content that we had about our trade missions that are exploring international markets that, you know, we, we go to different uh, countries and we establish relationships with the commerce departments and, and new relationships to, you know, um, import, export um, different things for our members. So that really, uh, we were able to highlight right off the bat here. And this international business development opportunity section used to be four or five levels deep on our old site. Wow. So the awesome part about this being major and, you know, one click away is that we've seen a 20% increase in our outside U.S. audience. Uh, so we used to, yeah, we now we're doing, you know, 
uh, 20 more percent um, than, than we used to. So it's really great. Yeah, it's really great to see countries that, you know, weren't really getting to our website uh, get there. Um, and so uh, with that, uh, with this mega menu, you know, it's the same situation for data and information events, government relations and news. But under data and information, the other thing that people can explore when they when they go on the site is uh, we're, like I mentioned, a da very data-driven association. And a lot of our business solutions are, you know, data exchange or, uh, you know, market performance uh, in the auto care industry and things like that. So uh, these were, you know, different efforts by different departments, but how can we bring it all together under one place? And that's what data and information is. So we not only sell data, but we also inform the industry about the latest and greatest. So we have our fact book there. We have all the work that we're doing for emerging vehicle transportation there. Our global vehicle inter identifier platform is in there. So it's a great mix of not just products, but things that help our member companies find solutions and answers to, to, to their questions. I love that. You've really put some very important member benefits right there. Um, you know, easily accessible, you increase the visibility to these things. Um, and that just makes your members happier. And so they're going to stay, you know, for, for a longer time because they have more access and visibility to these great benefits that you're offering. Yeah. And um, it's, it's really great to see that, uh, you know, with, with so many things, so when, when you look at your inventory of all the content you serve as an association, to get to see that light at the end of the tunnel where you've gone from, you know, I don't know how many options to five and you've been able to truly bring things that were so many levels down uh, up to the forefront and surface new content and make it discoverable, it's, it's really priceless because then you see that traffic to those pages and it's very validating, so. Absolutely. And you had mentioned this, but I just want to, you know, say again, the decrease in the amount of, you know, calls and questions that you're getting from members that are on the website. So they're no longer, you know, calling you when they're trying to find something. It's more of, hey, how can I, you know, um, convert basically. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, going back in the, in the, in the previous one, when we were talking about, you um, uh, you know, higher engagement on the site, uh, people are able to find the content they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, we used to get on a weekly basis, 50 or so emails uh, on the info box. Now we're seeing 20 or so. Yeah. Major, major decrease. And when they do contact us through a phone call or an email, it's about, hey, I'm interested in purchasing this. Like, I want to build this, you know, tailored product subscription because you know that's how our products work it's very customizable so um there they it really means they found the information they're looking for and they're ready to convert they're ready to have a conversation and, and make this big purchases happen so um the, the the information and the knowledge they those questions are put out in this in these emails are no longer as vague they're very specific and that speaks volumes to, you know, all the information we've been able to curate and put out. Absolutely. And just the whole structure of the website. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's talk about, you know, what's next. So uh, have you taken a very long vacation, a big deep breath? Because you just launched it at the end of January. You know, this is still, it's still pretty fresh, but I'm hoping that you've had a little break. <laughs> but yeah. let's future plans yeah um future plans uh we definitely think this is the beginning of a new era of, of a new experience of always constantly elevating uh and meeting those expectations of our members because we know you know we, we can't take anything for granted and, and we want to help them shine um so with that um you know one of our pillars is working on our global growth that we will continue supporting that through um, uh, the specific effort of um, offering the website in other languages. Um, you know, we have the capabilities with Affinity, um, but 
what we want is microsite experiences where you know specific audiences have access to specific things you know you don't need your entire website translated it's not just a translation job or gig it's it's what specific areas of your website are important to specific demographics outside the us for us you know we have a big base in latin america and with auto parts the names vary depending on the country so how do you strategize and what group do you uh, prioritize over others or which one has the most um, you know plain nomenclature that others can use or others will know what it is right so finding that that right uh, language that right strategy to to get to to more of those audiences um, you know working also on things outside just web but you know you can have a really nice website but you also want to Make sure you rank well in things like Google. So building that search engine optimization, finding the right keywords that will get you on the top results page for those languages. You know that's also an important factor. Um, having the right images that can reflect those new audiences, because with Syfinity you can also support. You know, depending on the place you are, you can uh, display different images, and that just really helps with the personalization. Yeah. Building a relationship with that audience, so it doesn't just feel like when that audience lands on that website, on that page, they're just seeing a translated job that they could have just done Google Translate on, you know, but it's just more than just a Google Translate that you're, you know, they, they know that you're paying attention to them. And, and I love that you, you brought up Google and all of this, cause you know, we can't ignore Google, um, but looking at your data again, I mean, it's very rare that you have an increase in traffic with the significant um, improvement and engagement as well. So what that tells us is not only are, you know, the right people finding your site, but once they're finding it, they're staying on the site. Um, and, you know, traffic can be, traffic has, you know, quality as well. So, you know, making sure that you're attracting the right people. Is yeah. Well. We've seen an uptick on organic and direct traffic sources. Um, we used to get a lot more referral traffic, but I think as an association, you want to build a name for yourself. And for us, we want to be the top resource in the aftermarket industry and in the auto automotive industry. So, you know, you want to also take time in doing keyword research in, in, in making sure you're using the right keywords in your description for Google. Um, using um, you know images and 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 adding alternative text, you yeah. know all these things that are more than just putting content on a page. Absolutely, yeah. Content and your website does not exist in a vacuum. So I, I love that you're continuing to put your members first, and um, we're excited to you know continue working with you on that um, and these different phases of rolling that out. That'll be great. We'll yeah. have a follow up on that to, to, to see, you know, how things went. Yeah, we're really excited about, you know, uh, our efforts, our international efforts. Um, we also want to uh, look at things like um, mentioned search engine optimization that never ends, really. That's always a thing because Google is obviously constantly changing their algorithms and that's always a struggle, but <laughs> it keeps you busy. Um, you know, our mobile experience, how we can, how we can better that, um, you know, also it, the fact that it's not just your website, but you want to look at all the different entries that your, your that your um, member or, or, you know, target audience gets to. Uh, um, so that could be, you know, your member portal, that can be your event registration platform, or it, um, so the, all of those things are important to take into account. And um, that's kind of those innovations. Like we want to look at any innovation or new offering holistically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we are getting close to time here. So I want to make sure that we're um, answering some questions um, that have come in you know, during today's webinar. Um, and let's see. Okay, so one that came in, um, are you happy with the CMS that you chose and how did you approach your selection process? Yeah, so uh, the, the, the CRM, how we chose that was later in the process um, when we were ready for the implementation or the redesign. Mm -hmm. um, we, in the digital strategy, 
uh, it helped it, it helped inform our requirements. We took the staff requirements as well, the business needs, the association needs, and all of those. We we developed this big Excel, and then we started basically filtering. Well, what is a CRM question? What is an a, a CMS question? And based on that, we got our RFPs to our CRM and our and our CMS. And then we decided to go through a selection process, a vendor selection process. Mm -hmm. And that's how we arrived with Sitefinity and Results Direct because you know, it's not just choosing the right platform being Sitefinity, but choosing the right partner to help us leverage that technology. And Sitefinity had a lot of the features that we were looking for that had to do with you know, keeping the user interface simple, for example was huge to our staff. Uh, we even did a survey like out of these CRM, CMSs, which one do you find more user friendly? Because we want to make sure that staff can adopt, like staff adoption to the tool is important to us because if we don't have their buy-in, it's much harder to put out good content, right? Yeah. So there were, there were some features, I think, candidly from other uh, CMSs that could have been Fun to see, but do we really need them at this stage? Do we want to get buy-in from staff first? Do we want to keep it intuitive and easy for them to use? Um, those were priorities to us, mm -hmm. an association. And then um, Syfinity did take a bunch of our must needs. Um, so that's how we landed there. Um, I think that's great. And you know, going back to you really put a lot of work up front into that strategy and then found the technology that was going to allow you, you know, that was going to support that strategy. The way, and the way I would put it is your website is, it's meeting the member and, and, and user needs, but your CMS is meeting your staff needs. That's how I would put it because um, we really took our time to make sure that staff felt like Sectinity was the right option. Um, again, because of the UI, because of, of how easy it was to edit a page, um, the, the fact that it wasn't so cluttered compared to other um, CMSs where there's so many options and then you don't know ultimately what you need to click on in order to do a web update. So it was a lot easier to take in and that really helped support the main thing, which is of course, you know, having a website that has fresh content, easy, easy for members to access. Yes, and when you're getting staff buy-in and you know making sure that they're comfortable in the system, that's just making things more efficient and making you guys more effective for your members so that you're not constantly faced with obstacles just updating the website. You have time for other things. Exactly. I would say my biggest thing is, of course, internally, I was having fights within because I worked with most CMSs before. Uh -huh. There's some features that I know certain CMSs have that will be like, oh my God, like I really want that. But that's two, three steps down the road that we can also get it accomplished in Sitefinity. Mm -hmm. But it's through a different route. Um, but, you know, just I, really trying to put staff needs first and, and hearing that feedback and what works for them. Because if they feel comfortable, they, they will make your life much easier in, in helping you know them uh, shine through that content and elevate them because they're the subject matter experts at the end. Right. Um, well, okay, so I think we have one time for one more question. Um, okay, do you have any advice for an organization ready to do a website redesign this year? Yeah. Um, hear it. Yeah, and going back, you know, I think try to ask yourself, is it just a website redesign that you need or is it a digital transformation? Because I know, you know, sometimes we can look at it, we just need a new website, but uh, when you hear the feedback from your members that are like, you know, we want to purchase this thing in a much easier way, or we want the user experience to be better, you know, the user experience isn't just your website. It's all the different points of, of entry or interactions uh, digitally, right? So um, you can get our scope creep, scope creep, I think, if you just look at it from just one angle, right? So uh, we knew uh in in the project it, it ended up being two years because the first year we took time to do this digital strategy really getting to organize our organizational 
uh, you know, needs, uh, our members' needs, and then looking for the technology. So the second year was about implementation, really. But in that first year, we try to align, well, what are all these platforms that a member can interact with us through, right? All of those things are important in taking into account and, and making that ecosystem work together in unifying the experience because, um, you know, you can offer a great experience through your website, but if you don't have the right CRM or the right, um, you know, member engagement tool or event platform, then that experience gets fragmented uh, and carrying that whole uh, uh, portion through really helps um, uh, drive more value uh, to, your, to them. So I would just, you know, ask yourself, um, is this just a web or do you want it to be more and you want to really fully transform the way your members get access to you? I think that's awesome. And, you know, I think what you've talked about today is just proof that, um, you know, going into this, thinking of it as a full kind of transformation and, you know, more than, more than just the website and thinking of it very holistically, it, it pays off and, and you're seeing that. Yeah. And, um, it's 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 harder to get um, it, it's a it's a mindset change definitely for your organization for you, um, but it pays off because instead of uh, you know prolonging that implementation because normally the, the way I've seen these projects go is you know your your project your CMS is meant to roll out in eight months or so and it ends up being twelve or ten mm -hmm. you know and uh, to us. It was we, we met the goal of launching as on a specific date and and we knew that from the get-go because we had really taken our time in the planning process way prior to the implementation we tried to really pin down well what is the taxonomy what is information architecture what is the the user needs and then you know the integrations with our crm the technology you know bringing the content in all of those things just fell into place but that's because we put certain things first that normally, you know, take time and, and kind of like little by little start getting added into your timeline. Um, by taking those things out, we were able to truly uh, work on, on, on the project management in a more efficient way. Awesome. Well, I think, you know, we're going to wrap up for today. Um, but thank you so much, Natalie. This was fantastic. Um, and, you know, I, I, I know that this has got to be inspiring for a lot of people that are hearing this. Um, and so if you are out there and you're listening and you're planning for a redesign or a digital transformation um, or a new content management system or just simply looking to improve results um, like AutoCare did, um, we would love to partner with you. Um, and you can contact me at my email address on the screen or visit the Results Direct website to submit our contact form to arrange for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. We'd love to talk to you. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us. Special thanks again to Natalie for sharing your story and such impressive results. Um, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Perfect. Okay.